Welcome to worship at Wyzetta Community Church. I'm John Ross, part of the pastoral team here. And as we begin in worship, I wanna remind you that we have three online ways to stay spiritually connected. First, uh, a hello button for any of you that are visiting with us today. We also have a prayer request button for anyone in need of pastoral prayer. And of course, our give button that allows you to support our many ministries. Now, let us join our hearts and minds in worship. And let us begin by speaking together ancient words of the psalmist that still hold the power to remake us from within. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Should I fear anyone? The Lord is a fortress protecting my life. Should I be frightened of anything? When evildoers come at me trying to eat me up, it's they, my foes and my enemies, who stumble and fall. I have asked one thing from the Lord, it's all I seek, to live in the Lord's house all the days of my life, seeing the Lord's beauty and constantly adoring His temple. started, um, gosh, mid-March, I realized it was important for me to pivot in my ministry, to be able to find a way to still reach kids, still be uh, God's hands and feet in the world in a new way. And soon after that, I realized also that there were a lot of senior people in our community and in our neighborhoods that weren't getting out. They weren't able to leave where they were. And I thought this would be a natural partnership to be able to do some letter writing from kids to seniors because when you reach outside of yourself and toward others, you, you become less self-centered and, and, and the joy from your heart exudes out into the world. We need to reach beyond those little tiny walls of our friend group or people on our soccer team or um, right in our neighborhood and when you can expand that into a wider piece of your community, you learn more about the needs that are really out there and you're, you're touched and moved in a whole new way. And it really starts with the middle name of our church and that's Wyzetta Community Church. And uh, we're very community-based and very focused on the community. There's such a deep desire in each one of us to look beyond ourselves and to help our brothers and sisters help those that we can and sometimes our lives get so busy that uh, we forget that we get wrapped up in ourselves and, and when we get out of ourselves and when we serve others you can just see that inner need to be a part of the kingdom to and to help our brothers and sisters just blossom just because we're not here in the building doesn't mean that we're still not the church and we still don't care for each other I mean that's been central to my faith journey is that we really are each other's keepers um, and that's one of the reasons why I love WCC and so I think supporting the church is is still doing the job it always did it just looks a little bit differently one of my favorite verses is Galatians 6 2 that says carry each other's burdens and whether that carrying is through monetary donation, whether it's through you know, donating service of your time or your prayer. The Bible makes more promises about giving and generosity than it does about any other promise. And when you give to other people, it fills you with a joy that is beyond comprehension. And when you give for ministries such as the special needs ministry, you're helping people reach a common goal which is to feel valued and to feel loved and to feel needed. I think the Wyzetta Community Church offers so many areas of connection and that's what community is all about. In this time of violence and these times of unrest, we need this more than ever with people that are different from us. I think that our church does a great job of attempting to build bridges. I love the plays, I love the sermons, I love the music. There's so much and so many opportunities to make new friends, to make connections again across similarities and across differences. And a church gives us so many opportunities to join together. 
Together we can support ministries that help children and youth build a strong foundation of faith. Together we can embrace the gifts of all generations and create a legacy of wisdom. Together we can be a supportive community to mothers, to fathers, and to all families through family ministry programs and events. Together we can grow our special needs ministry for greater reach in our community. Together we can help feed those who are hungry and house those who have no home. Together we can create innovative, inspiring, and faith-filled worship. Together we can create a path to social justice and help create a better world for all God's people. Together we can expand our amazing digital worship opportunities far outside of the walls of our church. As we have seen over the last several weeks through our Together campaign videos, God is at work among us in so many different ways. Although how we gather has changed, what will never change is that Wyzetta Community Church is being used by God to bring the inclusive love of Jesus to the world. I hope seeing these stories of God at work in this place has reminded you of how God is at work in your life as well. Our Together campaign has just one week remaining. We hope to receive most pledges by November 15th, so please go to wccpledge.org today and make your pledge for 2021. We can do so much more to bring hope to the world when we offer our gifts together.
Wisdom and courage are the themes John is inviting us to consider for the living of these days. When it comes to both wisdom and courage in the Christian tradition, it's tough to beat the epistles of John. Not to be confused with the Gospel of John, the epistles, or letters of John, are traditionally believed to have come out of a community of early Christians who faced real and valid threats because of their faith. Listen now to the encouragement they were given to live out their faith in spite of their fears. Hear these words from 1 John chapter 4. Dear friends, let's love each other because love is from God and everyone who loves is born from God and knows God. The person who doesn't love does not know God because God is love. This is how the love of God is revealed to us. God has sent his only son into the world so that we can live through him. This is love. It's not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as the sacrifice that deals with our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us this way, we also ought to love each other. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Wisdom and courage are the themes of our current sermon series based on lyrics written by Harry Emerson Fosdick in his famous hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory. 90 years ago, he penned words that are as relevant and meaningful today as they were then. It was a fearful and anxious time in our country. In the depths of the Great Depression, unemployment north of 20%, food supplies dwindling due to natural disasters in our Great Plains, war was just beneath the surface in Europe, and right here at home we were preparing for a contentious presidential election. Two weeks ago, we began with the first verse, which invites us to find wisdom and courage for life just one hour at a time. Last week, the Sunday before our national elections, I talked about politics and the need for the wisdom and courage of the second verse for the living of these days. We turn now to the third verse. In the context of this pandemic, I'm forced to record my sermons several days in advance every week. So I'm actually preaching this message on election day and I have no idea who won the election. But it doesn't matter, because the message of the third verse of Fosdick's hymn is applicable no matter who is residing in the White House. And remember, as followers of Jesus, we answer to a higher call and we follow a divine mandate. Let's pray our way into the message for today using the prophetic lyrics of verse 3. Pray with me. Dear God, cure your children's warring madness. Bend our pride to your control. Shame our wanton selfish gladness, rich in things and poor in soul. Grant us wisdom, Grant us courage, lest we miss your kingdom's goal. Lest we miss your kingdom's goal. Amen. Meet Fletcher. Fletcher, or Fletch as we call him, is our adopted 70 pound pit bull that we rescued in spite of the reputation of his breed. Before we brought Fletcher into our home, we sat down with our vet, and he very thoughtfully assured us that dogs take on the personality and temperament of their owners, and they embody in their behavior the environment of their home. We love Fletcher as a member of our family. He's sweet and cuddly and as unconditionally loving of us as any dog we've ever owned. He's a good little brother to our other dog, Jombo. 
So you can imagine our disappointment when taking Fletcher for his first walk in Wyzetta and watching strangers literally cross the street to avoid walking near him. We had nothing to fear in rescuing Fletcher and bringing him into our home. People walking in Wyzetta had nothing to fear in greeting and even petting him. But a deep-seated fear was at work in us before Fletcher came home and in those strangers walking in Wyzetta. We almost missed having Fletch as a beloved member of our family because of that fear. And everyone who crosses the street to avoid him, they miss the experience of his unconditional love. Now Fletcher is a dog. And some people have good reasons to fear all dogs, much less a 70 pound pit bull. But my real point is the dangers of deep-seated and unfounded fear. Because let's be honest, 70 pound pit bulls aren't the only thing that we cross the street to avoid. Harry Emerson Fosdick more than 90 years ago prophetically predicted the impact of our deep-seated fears of the stranger, of the unknown, of the unfamiliar other. He prayed for the avoidance of fear that would divide us as people of God, asking instead for wisdom and courage. He was worried that we might miss the mark of God's goal. So he wrote, grant us wisdom, grant us courage, lest we miss your kingdom's goal. Now, earlier in the third verse, Fosdick was very specific about what he thought could cause us to miss God's goal, all of which grow out of deep-seated and unfounded fear. Fears that we hold about other people. He saw war and pride and selfish gladness as very real threats to God's goal. He wrote, cure your children's warring madness. Bend our pride to your control. Shame our wanton selfish gladness rich in things and poor in soul. Three fear-based threats to the kingdom's goals. Warring madness is the division between people and nations. Pride is the inflated sense of self that grows within us. And selfish gladness, it's the unhealthy fear that there won't be enough. Now, first as to warring madness, remember that Fosdick wrote these words in 1930, not long before President Franklin Delano Roosevelt spoke his famous inaugural words that we have nothing to fear, but fear itself. We talked about this last week. But remember also that less than a decade later, and in the context of World War, that same president ordered the forced relocation of 130,000 Japanese Americans into internment camps. A fear-based response that we've seen recently and similarly leveraged against Muslims and other people from foreign nations. Now, as to bending our pride to God's control, when we fear other people, we judge them. We judge them as less than ourselves. And when we do all that, we miss the mark. Our pride gets in the way. Think about our LGBTQ sisters and brothers, daughters and sons, who have had to declare their own pride just for being exactly who God created them to be. And after nearly 50 years of fighting for their rights, are still held at arm's length by leaders in both our government and the church. Now, as to selfish gladness, Fosdick nailed it when he contrasted rich in things and poor in soul. Decades before what we now know is the greatest disparity of wealth since he wrote these lyrics 90 years ago, Fosdick predicted our obsession with material gain, our scarcity mentality, 
and our unfounded fear that there isn't going to be enough. We keep accumulating more of what we already have too much of, rich in things, poor in soul. In every case, we see that our unfounded fear of others from any angle of vision, be it war or pride or selfishness, brings out the worst in us every time. And worst of all, it causes us to miss the mark of God's goal for us. We need to re-examine our fears, lest we miss God's kingdom's goals. Take your pick. Are you at war with a stranger? Do you think you're better than any of God's other children? Are you afraid there won't be enough so you selfishly keep more than you need while others suffer? Well, more important than these threats is our basic need to be positively clear about God's goal. So let me ask you this, what do you think is God's goal, the kingdom's goal? Not just for you, not just for our church or religion, not just for our state or nation. What is God's goal for all of God's creation? What matters most? Someone asked Jesus that very question. Which of God's goals matter most? Jesus replied quickly, love. Love God with all your heart and soul and mind. Love. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love. Love is God's goal. It's the one we miss when our life is overrun by fear rather than faith. It's hard to see that goal when we're blinded by unfounded fear. We can't possibly love our neighbor when we spend so much time being afraid of them. If we were in a therapist's office, she would want us to get in touch with these deep-seated and unfounded fears. She would talk to us about cognitive restructuring. It's a fancy word for the process by which we literally deprogram our brains, replacing negative and untrue experiences that result in fear with positive and truthful ideas that bring out our best selves. We need the cognitive restructuring available to us in 1 John chapter 4. Let me read those words for you again. Dear friends, let's love each other because love is from God and everyone who loves is born from God and knows God. The person who doesn't love does not know God because God is love. It is not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And if God loved us this way, we also ought to love each other. And here's the clincher. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Look, this has been a tough chapter for a lot of people lately and for the unity of our nation. We've been taught and told to fear those different from us. War is real. Pride is the order of the day and selfishness is baked into our culture, but we still have the clear call of Christ and the enduring goal of God's kingdom, love. It's Tuesday, November 3rd, election day right now, and I have no idea who will win this election. But one thing I do know is that when we miss God's kingdom's goal, we all lose. So let's not give in to fear and cross the street to avoid someone. Let's find the wisdom and muster the courage to meet the stranger and to love all our neighbors. Amen.
Join me now in prayer. O God, gather us now to be with you as you are with us. Soothe our tiredness, quiet our fretfulness, curb our aimlessness, relieve our compulsiveness. Let us be easy for a moment. O Lord, release us from the fears and guilts 
which grip us so tightly, from the expectations and opinions which we so tightly grip, that we may be open to receiving what you give. O God, gather us now to be with you as you are with us. Keep us in touch with the world, with its needs, with its anxieties, with its angers and pains and corruptions, that we may serve daily in love. O God, gather us now to be with you as you are with us as we navigate the living of these days with your wisdom and with courage from you. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to guide us as together we pray the prayer your Son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for making our time of worship complete with your presence. If you're new to the ministries of Wyzetta Community Church, we're so glad you could be our guest and hope you'll return to take a closer look at what God is up to in this place. But for now, go with our blessing. And don't let the world around you squeeze you into its mold, but let God remake you from within. For what does the Lord require of us but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Amen. Amen.